Hi, my name is Naveen Raghavan, Workplace Relations Advisor for NECA Victoria. At NECA, we will be by your side with advice, guidance, and documentation to help you address the fallout from the ProBuild collapse. With the shutdown of ProBuild sites across Australia and the announcement that the company, along with WBHO Infrastructure and Monaco Hickey, has gone into administration as an affected employer, which has caused unprecedented disruptions. It is also not clear at this stage when, or even if, ProBuild sites will open again. As an employer, you are most likely looking at your options to reduce costs over the coming months to protect your business. In doing so, you may be considering making some of your employees redundant. Other options you might consider are accessing government financial support, allowing employees to access paid or unpaid leave, modifying duties or rosters, reduction of hours by agreement, or standing down your employees. Reducing the hours of work of an employee is a good way to keep your workforce employed while you consider other jobs and opportunities for the business rather than terminating employment straight away. It is important to consider employees' access to paid leave if they have sufficient approval to this, including annual and long service leave. A period of unpaid leave may also be considered after consultations with affected employees. Duties and rosters may also be modified. We run through this note guide that members can access by contacting us. Hi, my name is Saraswati Bharatarajulu, or Saras for short, and I'm the principal lawyer for the legal arm of the Business Solutions Hub. Talking about reduction of hours for the workforce is the next part of this. Reducing the number of hours for your workforce is a really good alternative to simply just terminating your employees. It provides the company with the opportunity to look for other job opportunities while retaining the expertise of its workforce within uh, the company's folds. Now, if you want to reduce the number of hours for your employees, you need to make sure that you comply with any consultation obligations contained within the company's enterprise agreement employment contracts, policies, or any modern award that covers the employees. It is important to note that you cannot unilaterally reduce the number of hours for your employees. They must agree to it. We also recommend discussing with them paid leave entitlements that they have access to for them to use it, or if they don't, whether they want to take unpaid leave. So when discussing reduction in hours with your employees, present all of these options to them as well as discuss what are some of the other alternatives the company would have to consider should they not agree to a reduction in hours. This could be things like redundancy or stand down if applicable. If you're considering stand down, you need to look at the provisions under the Fair Work Act or any enterprise agreement that your company has. Now, stand down typically takes place where your employees cannot be usefully employed anymore uh, because of a stoppage of work and the cause for which you as a company or employer cannot be reasonably held responsible for. The next thing to consider is redundancy. So redundancy occurs where a particular job no longer needs to be done, uh, and it's all about the role, not the individual. Certain scenarios where redundancies can take place is where there has been a technological change, where there's been an economic downturn, where company mergers, uh, where there have been company mergers or restructuring, where there have been changes to production method. The pro-build site closures could fall within this purview. So how do you decide who to make redundant is a very difficult process indeed. The first thing you need to do is understand that redundancy about, is about the role of the individual. Once you've identified the role that needs to be made redundant, say for example, you've got 10 employees doing electrical work, uh, and you need to make two of those roles redundant, you then look at all 10 individuals and start to consider who to make redundant out of the 10. To consider these things, it, the recommended approach and the approach approved by several tribunals is to consider the skills, the experience, the training and performance of individuals compared to the current and future needs of the company. Redundancy payments. Where an employer engages 15 or more employees, an employee's position is made redundant, shall be entitled to redundancy pay in accordance with the National Employee Standards in the Fair Work Act. 
or as provided for in any enterprise agreement that may cover your employees. You must also provide the relevant notice of termination. At NECA, we will be by your side with advice, guidance, and documentation to help you address the fallout from the pro bill collapse. If you are unsure what your obligations are, please contact the NECA Workplace Relations Team for assistance. The Workplace Relations Team can be contacted by workplace.relations at nika.asn.au on 1300 300 031.